Welcome back. My next guest is among the pioneers that helped turn private equity into the multi-trillion dollar industry that it is today. He's a pioneer on Wall Street as well. John Castle is the founder, chairman, and CEO of Castle Harlan. Over the past 30 years, Castle Harlan has become a leader among middle market private equity firms, investing in 105 companies with an enterprise value of over $15 billion. John is also formerly the president and CEO of Donaldson Lufkin Genret. When I hear DLJ, I, I, my heart warms. I used to love that firm and, and talk to a lot of your guys back in the day uh, during the boom. It's good to have you on the program. Well, it's nice to be here, Maria. Good to Thank see you very much for inviting me. Thank you so much. So let, let, what's your assessment of what's happening these days in the markets? I mean, at the end of the year last year, we had real volatility. I think there was a lot of noise out there in terms of what's going on in Washington, in terms of these worries about a growth slowdown. What do you think are driving markets? And I know that you're invested in the private equity field, but you, you have but an But at this point in time, I think the political scene seems to have a massive impact on the public markets. Yeah, and, and I know you have an opinion ha about this standoff between the president and Nancy Pelosi. Yes, and, um, and it's also having an impact on the, uh, uh, on the private markets in that issues about uh, whether they're going to be tariffs with China and so forth have mean that many of our private companies are examining, well, can we source from China? Do we have to source from others, other places? Do, are we going to Vietnam or Mexico or something like that? And the result is that uh, because of the fact that uh, there's the political issues, uh, even private companies uh, are, are, are being affected in that context. Now, their view is probably longer. Uh, they're thinking about the next five years. Where do I want to be making my sub-assemblies? Where do I want to be making components and so forth? You need certainty. Yeah, exactly. And right now, it's very uncertain. And, uh, and uh, there's a possibility that there could be a very high tariff not probably a probability, but a, a possibility. And as a result, do you want to be making things in China or do you want to move your sourcing elsewhere? Yeah, it makes, it makes a lot of sense about the uncertainty that could impact the economy, uh, which is what we're wondering if this standoff is going to impact the economy. I think the White House said that it's going to be a one-tenth of an impact every week. Uh, in terms of negative growth. Uh, we'll, we'll see what the quarter looks like in terms of GDP. How are you allocating capital right now? I know you've invested a fair amount in Houston in the oil sector, right? Uh, we, over the years, we've uh, invested in the oil sector for various reasons. I've been in the oil business for over 50 years now. And um, of course, over a long period of time, it's an excellent place to be. Although, as we all know, the price of oil can be very cyclical can fluctuate a great deal, and clearly when it fluctuates uh, down a great deal, it has a very major impact on, uh, on certain segments of, of the oil industry, um, particularly uh, places where you have private drillers and folks who, of that nature, as opposed to governments which uh, in Saudi Arabia, they kind of keep plugging along regardless because it's national policy, it's balance of payments, all those kinds of issues. But when you get to West Texas, you get to the Permian Basin, the price of oil falls to a certain level, people stop drilling. Yeah, so what happens now with oil prices where they are? For a little while, we were looking at prices all the way down in the $40 level. We're above 50 once again uh, on oil. But what's your sense of, uh, of well, uh, 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 prices uh, given the supply situation? My, my, my sense is that people are continuing to operate uh, that in the case of the Permian Basin for instance apparently people are economic have good economics at fifty dollars but uh, they are a little more wary they're a little more careful when placing orders for various kinds of completion equipment and so forth they aren't quite as robust or enthusiastic or they aren't buying out for the next 12 months to say let's buy a quarter at a time let's see what happens so you are also invested in the restaurant business, is that right? Absolutely. Tell me about that, because this is a good indicator of the economy. When people have more money in their pockets, they're feeling more confident, they go out to dinner. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, if they have a very good work, week uh, at their work, if their commission check is good, if uh, they got some extra overtime, well, you're right, they spend the money. And I think probably um, that restaurants are one of the best coincident indicators of the economy. If the economy has been good for the week, people go Go out and eat. If it's been bad, they 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 stay home and sure. eat Cheerios. What something. are you seeing from the restaurant industry uh, and the restaurants I, I, that you own? Uh, things seem to be reasonably solid, reasonably buoyant at this point in time. Uh, there are no indications of the restaurant industry that we're in any kind of an adverse economic period. 
How have things changed from your days at DLJ in, in, in terms of the financial services sector? Well, uh, uh, clearly a number of, uh, lots of things have happened. Uh, DLJ, of course, was unique in that it, we were the leaders in going public. We were the first member of the New York Stock Exchange to go public. And um, the fact that uh, you now have public firms as opposed to totally private partnerships means that, uh, that uh, there's been an accumulation of a lot bigger balance sheets for these companies. And uh, they're able to take on bigger risks. They're able to do more things and so forth. Um, certainly, that's a big change. Private equity itself is a, a very significant change. Uh, if you go back to the late 60s, uh, funds were tens of millions of dollars. Today, they're now tens of billions of yeah, dollars, basically incredible. a thousand times bigger. And um, the fact that private equity is so big today, mm. uh, among the reasons that, for instance, an Uber can be a private company, even though it has a market capitalization, I think, of seventy billion or yeah, something. Yeah. That wouldn't have been nothing like that would have even slightly been possible thirty or forty years ago. I'll tell you, I think there uh, have estimates out there that the Uber is going to go public at a hundred and fifty billion dollar valuation. Well, uh, God bless them. Pretty incredible, John. It's great to have you on the program this weekend. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thanks so much for joining us.